sit, sit. This is the back of Sue. I'm seeing the front of Sue, and this is Sue's road back to success. What's the cat's name again? I keep on forgetting. Uh, Kasim. Kasim. Kasim is, uh, uh, I'm saying a puppy, but he's a kitten. And, uh, and in the video above, you saw she was a little bit reticent to come over to me. Um, now, I showed her a lot of respect. A lot of us, we think that what I'm trying to do is a good thing when I pet you. So it's okay for me to touch a dog and pet a dog. Well, dogs will tell, give you a couple communications that they don't want you to pet them. Typically, when you reach for them, they're gonna turn their head to the side, they're gonna back up, they're gonna lower their head, or they're gonna kind of have a hunched over body mechanic. We think, well, my goal is a good thing, it's petting you, so it's okay to do it. It's not. So what I recommend for dogs like her, yeah, let's get that off of you, let's not rip a hole in the shirt, um, is I reach 90% of the way, and see how she came and took that last little bit? And then I can pet the dog. Now, if you know the dog, that's different. But if you don't, if you don't know a dog, or you have a dog that's a little bit reticent, reach and then wait for that dog to come and give you that last 10 percent that's the dog's way of saying yes i want to pet you or want you to pet all right and now i think what it was is she went she fell asleep she had been stressed out and she woke up she's like who's this guy in the salmon shirt still here so uh now as you can see she's we're buddies all right so um let me say we started off this one talking about uh, uh exercise she is uh, a year old and um she is uh not a super duper high energy dog but she probably needs more exercise um, so um, I recommend the guardian look at, looking at maybe using a laser, playing fetch, um, running up and down stairs. Um, another great one is scent games. Maybe you put her in your bedroom and you come in here, hide five treats, just like around the corner. She comes around, I smell chicken liver. And then when her nose helps her find it, it's stimulating for her, but it also is uh, physically draining. Uh, when dogs have energy injuries, this is a great way to exercise them without having a lot of impact. Now, um, I did notice when I was petting her that her dew claws, the claw that's here, is long and starting to grow into itself. It's not quite there yet, but they will. They grow in a circle. And uh, you're gonna go straight to the source of the treats? Yes, we're gonna have to keep that closed for a minute. So um, I've had clients whose dogs get, nails get so long they grow back in and become ingrown, or that they get so long that they splinter and fracture, and you have to actually amputate the entire nail. That requires surgery, and it's usually 500 to 1,000 bucks or more. So sit sit. Um, when I say a command, I really say it twice. Sit during the command stage and then sit when I start petting or provide the treat during the reward stage. And if you're going to uh, pet for a sit, wait for the dog to do what you want, then start petting first and then say sit immediately afterwards. Remember, dogs learn through repetition, consistency, and good timing. You have three seconds to correct or reward a dog for them to have the ability to make the connection, but you have to repeat it over and over consistently for them to actually get the lesson. Now, getting to the nails, uh, I think I have a video for this, but I, it's been a while and I can't remember. Uh, so I'm gonna go through how you can teach your dog to enjoy having the Dremel attached to their nails. First thing you need to do is get them used to you touching their paws. And for a lot of dogs, they don't like that. And so this, she's pretty good about it. But you see she's licking her lips. That's her way of saying, I don't want you to be touching my paws. So I stopped and listened to her. You want some water? Let's get that a little bit up. so you have to lean so far underneath. Okay, so what you wanna do, and you can do this during kibble or with kibble, uh, if your dog's really into kibble, she's a little finicky eater, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. So have, I'm gonna leave these treats with you. What I do is tear them in half, give her a treat, then pick up her paw and hold her digit up. Don't do anything, do it. just hold it for one second, then let her put her paw down, give her another treat, grab it and hold the next digit up. Do this for all the individual digits until you, for all, all four paws, and also the two claw. So all you're doing is just getting the dog used to you handling them while they have a delicious treat in their mouth. And they're pretty okay with it because they're chewing the treat. So you do that for a couple of days, maybe once a day for all four paws or twice. The more you practice it, the faster you'll get it. But I would recommend you do it at least once a day, two or three times a day would be ideal. Um, so after a while, you just, you know, you start grabbing her paws and she's like, all right, give me a mani petty, And she's comfortable with it. So that's the first stage. The second stage is, uh, well, not getting a Dremel, but I recommend getting Dremels from Dremel.com. Um, the ones that you get at other places with batteries, you're going through the batteries so fast, you want one with a rechargeable Dremel. So um, uh, that's where I got mine. So basically, the sound of the Dremel is hard for dogs. So then what I would do is I would now put a treat in the dog's mouth and then have somebody across the room turn the Dremel on for one second and turn it off. You want it running while she's chewing the treat. So again, we're using classical conditioning to create a positive association with the sound of the Dremel. So we do that, um, and I do that for maybe 10, 15 treats, do that three to five times a day. I uh, do that for a couple days in a row. 
And you could probably do these things simultaneously, not at the same time, but during the same uh, over, overlapping period. So maybe at, for, at 10 o'clock in the morning, we do the treats with all touching all the digits. Then maybe at 11.30, we do the dremel on, and I'm getting a treat, dremel on, I'm getting the treat. And we keep repeating that until eventually, uh, you know, the dremel on, she like perks up and she's like, oh, sweet, I'm about to get a treat. That's what we want, a positive association. The next stage is I'd go back to manipulating her, and this would be after you've done, achieved both those first ones, the holding the digit and turning it on. So the next stage would be you hold, you hold her, you give her the treat, hold her digit up, and then touch her nail with the dremel with it off. And do that for all individual digits. And keep on doing that until she's not pulling back, she's not, no protesting, is comfortable and relaxed. The next stage would be to, where we actually turn it on. So I probably, and for dogs that have trouble with this, I like turn it on and like move it towards. I give them a treat and then I turn it on and move it towards, but I don't touch the nail. So you make that just a motion. So a treat, you hold up my nail, and then, zzz, but it didn't even touch. And you do that until she's not protesting and not relaxed and not kind of wary of the Dremel. The next stage is you, you, turn, you have it on, and the, you're holding the digit, you give her the treat, zzz, just for one second. This is a hard stage. So this one you might have to go over quite a few times. And, when, and you can set her up for six, success by doing this after you pick her up from daycare, after you take her from a walk. Just make sure she has about 10 to 15 minutes recover if it's after exercise. So that way uh, you take a little bit of, if she's got full fight in her, then this is what she's gonna wanna do is protest. So you don't want her protesting, you don't wanna force her, you don't wanna be physical. Sue, I do have more treats for you. It looks better if you're here in the shot with us. How about we hang up and get those treats? All right, so that's how you can get your dog using the Dremel. You really wanna, uh, if the dog's nails get too long, it's hard to get that quick down. So I would recommend that you get into, uh, that you start doing that pretty quickly. Sit. Sit. Remember, every time you give her a treat, you should say the command word first and the treat goes in the mouth after. Same thing with petting. Pet, uh, sit, and then I start petting. All right, um, and avoid petting, reaching over her head. The guardians here do a good job of petting under the chin, but that's a good body mechanic for this dog to have its nose in the air. Um, we also talked about enforcing rules um, and that breaking a rule is not a reward for a dog. Matter of fact, it's very confusing and that creates frustration, that can lead to stress, that can lead to a lot of unwanted behaviors. So basically, uh, some of the rules, uh, the dog already has a rule not being allowed in the furniture, uh, but other rules, uh, I would say the dog's not allowed to be within seven feet of anyone who has food. We have a young child in the house and children are often not paying attention. They're holding a sandwich like this while they're watching TV and the dog's right here. They're like, oh, sandwich for me. So having the dog practice having seven feet around is just good overall practice. The table here, we have a Japanese style, so we sit down at the table. I would say that this L shape here, if anybody's sitting here, uh, and has food at the table, she is not allowed here, but I really try to do it like a box all the way around the table. She's over there drooling, looking, that's also inappropriate. So we wanna have her have seven or so feet away. If you do wanna teach her to go to a specific spot, it's really easy. All you do is just take out a treat like this, throw it in the spot, and when dog licks it up, you call it Jamaica or uh, Okinawa, or if you wanna go with the, the Japanese tip. Um, but so you just throw it to the dog bed, and I would recommend you get her a dog bed. You're gonna have, with kids, I always like to have a dog bed for the dog to go to. And I tell the kids, when the dog is on its dog bed or in the kennel, you are not allowed to interact with it at all. You can't ask it to come out. You can't reach in there. Dogs often have, I've read so many case studies about a dog with no bite history that suddenly started biting the kid because the kid wouldn't leave the, kid, the, uh, the dog alone. And it does not gonna do that when mom's there. It's gonna do it when mom and dad are away. And now the dog is backing away, backing away, and finally gets cornered and like nips the child and then the dog's the bad one. So we wanna give the dog, uh, dogs have a fight or flight response. We wanna give the dog, it's okay. We wanna give the dog the ability to move itself away rather than have to confront the child. So to, uh, for a dog bed, all I do is I take a treat, I throw it on the dog bed, I wait for the dog to put at least one paw on the dog bed, and then when it licks up the treat, I would say Jamaica or Okinawa or whatever, the Saki or whatever the city that is uh, the name that you wanna use. So after a while, you can say Okinawa, and the dog goes over the dog bed. Now I do this in three ways. I throw the treat, and I say the word, I usually do about 10 treats in a row, and wait for the dog to vacate before you throw the next treat. The second way I do it is when the dog's over there not paying attention, I drop a treat onto the dog bed, and I don't say a word. I wait for the dog to just, oh, there's a dog treat, and goes over and gets it. For this reason, I like to use light cream, white, or light gray for the color for dog beds, and no pattern on it. Dog's eyes are not very good for color or for detail. They're great for movement. So if it's a white treat, uh, white bed with a brown treat on it, she's gonna see it instantly. And you just put it there, don't point it out, observe, just wait. And when she goes over and licks it up, then you say, okay now. 
And the third way is I leave, leave the dog onto the dog bed, put in a sit or an LAY, and then I put the dog treat in their mouth and say Okinawa. If you do that a couple of times a day, you know, throw 10 treats on a row in a row, leave treats there and lead her on there. Very quickly, I usually, by halfway done in the session, the dog's sleeping on the dog bed, has never been on a dog bed before. Um, now also be careful, um, you might wanna look into getting, we're in the desert, she is a long-coated dog, it's hot here. Uh, so you might, and there, in this new place, there's only one soft uh, or cool area, well two, I guess by the front door and by here. They make cooling pads. It's kind of got the blue, they have a little bit of a gel in it and they, they keep the dog cool. You might wanna look into getting one of those for her at a soft, uh, softer but cooler place for her to lay on. So, um, all right, so other rules, not being allowed to, uh, in the kitchen when we're preparing food. Another rule I have, I tell the dog to sit before I let it out the door. I go to the door and I say, sit one time. If the dog doesn't sit within three seconds, I walk away, sit down nearby and wait one minute. After one minute, I get up and go back to the door and command the dog to sit again, only one time. If the dog doesn't sit within three seconds. This time I walk away and sit down for two minutes. Next time I sit down for four minutes, then for eight minutes, always sit down. Uh, and then just double the length of time. And eventually when you go over and say sit and she sits, open that door open as fast as you can. So you might want to put the leash on her so she's dragging it around during this portion. So as soon as she opens, uh, she uh, sits, that door flies open. After a while, she'll sit the door as a way of asking to go out. Um, I'm not going to go through the, uh, the uh, way to teach her to ring the bell because uh, I went through that with the off camera. But well, basically just make sure you take the bell out and ring it while she's going and when, it, when she's chewing the treat. And if you have questions about that, message me on videos. I can share with you on that one. Another one is um, the guardians are right now feeding her once a day. I'd like her to be fed two or three times a day. And uh, feed her breakfast, put the food down. Uh, remember the temperature of the food is more important than the taste. She's kind of finicky with the food. We're trying to get her put on more weight. She's young. She won't have that problem. She gets older, I promise you. Uh, but basically um, you can add warm water to her dry kibble and that will make it more appealing. Uh, just be careful because the liquids go through dogs in about 45 minutes. So you don't want to load her up with too much liquid and then have her need to have an uh, to go to the bathroom, she's going to start having accidents in the house. So um, if you can, try to feed her breakfast maybe about an hour before you're actually going to leave for work. That way you can take her out in 45 minutes and give her the ability to relieve herself for whatever those things are uh, or for whatever she needs to go. Um, okay, we also talked about petting with a purpose and paths of training. Petting with a purpose is if the dog comes up and licks me or nudges me or paws at me, it's telling me what to do. If I pet it, it reinforces to the dog that, yeah, you have the same rank as the humans or more rank. Lack of rules tells the dog that we are peers or close to being equals. Now, the guardians had a couple rules in place, but those other rules I talked about are, are consequential for dogs, so they'll be, they'll be very beneficial. So for petting with a purpose, the dog comes up and nudges you or licks you, you tell her to sit. If she sits, you pet her under a chin and say the word sit and only the word sit. Don't use too many words. Good sit puts the important word in the position the dog's not going to listen to because they heard the first word you say. So when it sits, you pet her under the chin and say sit. If she doesn't sit, then you show her, I got other things to do. You're at the top of my list, but if you can't be bothered to sit, I got 23 other things I can be doing right now. I be unpacking stuff. I can be sending a mail. I can be checking uh, you know, the internet. I can be reading articles, watching TV or whatever. So if you tell your dog to sit and it doesn't do it and you've petted anyways, then why do I have to listen to you? So show your dog through your actions that if you don't sit, then you don't get the privilege of my attention. And after a while, when the dog kind of starts thirsting for that, they're gonna be more inclined to do that. And they're gonna realize, because some of the times they will sit, they're gonna realize I, can, I have to go and prepay for the attention by sitting down to ask for it instead of pawing. And so once your dog does start prepaying for attention, make sure you pet and recognize, otherwise they'll go back to the old thing. So pet it once under the chin to an infinity number of pets, as much or as little as you want, at least one pet to acknowledge it. After a while, like I said, they'll start sitting to prepay, and now they've adopted a follower's mindset. Followers ask, leaders tell. Now she's asking versus telling. That will absolutely help with their separation anxiety. Now, uh, remember to use the watchword paycheck if someone's petting without a purpose. You come in the room, you say paycheck, that person can't argue, even if they did it the right way, they stop petting, tell the dog to sit or lie down, do not do paw. And then, and when they sit or lie down, you pet them and say, actually, I asked her to sit, and when you came in the room, she stood up, that's okay. Uh, but if you argue about it, she's like, well, you're all on your own page. I'll be on my page too. And even if you want to pet your dog, still tell your dog to sit to earn that a pet. And for your daughter, what I would say is the dog guy taught me that when we pet our dog, that's how we say thank you. Would you say thank you before or after I give you this piece of candy? And little <laughs> kids her age usually say before. And they say, really? And they're like, 
Oh, after? That's right, here's an M&M or a jelly bean. And I'll thank you. So then you have your kid telling the dog to sit and then petting it to say thank you establishes a very healthy, wonderful leader follower dynamic. Um, okay, so we also talk about passive training. Passive training is waiting for the dog to organically offer you the behavior that you want without any influence from you. So every time Sue comes to you, pet her and say come. Every time she lays down, pet her and say chill. Every time that she sits down, pet her and say sit. Every time she takes her food, come up with a word that means eat, maybe sushi or whatever you wanna say. So every time for three months she takes a bite of food, she hears the word sushi, well sushi means I gotta go eat. I would also do the same thing for water. When she drinks water, say agua or happy hour or Merlot or Heineken or whatever your favorite cocktail is. And now you can tell the dog to go drink, which is really helpful. Name all of your individual toys. Now all bully sticks can be bully sticks, all bones can be bones, balls can be balls. But if you have a, uh, an elephant, call it Trump. If you have a little fire truck, call it, you know, ready or whatever, you know, come up with a nickname for them. And remember, come up with funny command words. Hey Sue. Come. That's a little passive training right there. I pull out the treats. You don't have to even pull out treats. You can just pet her. Come. And now we'll use a little passive training or uh, petting with purpose. Sit. Sit. Now you got a little bit on your nose. All right. So passive training is the absolute easiest way to train a dog to do anything. You just have to be observant. So I have a watchword for this. I say touch by because I think it sounds funny. So if somebody comes, so somebody said testify to me, I would look at Sue and she's, just, she's standing, I would say come. If she was sitting, I would pet her and say sit. If she's laying down, I'd pet her and say chill. So you just look at the dog and narrate what they're really doing. You can't ask the person, you only have that three second window. So you're just gonna pet, start petting the dog automatically. Now, um, uh, we also went over a focus exercise. I don't have a video for that here. I have hundreds of videos for that on my website. So if you wanna find out how to do that, go to your web, go to doggoneproblems.com, click on dog training tips, and then uh, search for uh, focus. And there will be all these videos that show how to do that. Practice that and get to that. The cat's getting into something. Um, but practice that because that, the way that I teach it can actually reduce cortisol, the stress hormone in the dog's blood. So that's, if she is stressing out, taking her away from whatever is stressing her out, get her to sit and take a treat. If she won't sit or take a treat, that's her way of saying it's too intense. So when she sits or takes a treat, then start doing the focus exercise focus and you can take her away from thinking about whatever it is and stop the production of cortisol and release those pleasure endorphins into her brain and into your brain. Um, and then we also did the video on teaching her to stay and you wouldn't come to me at that point, it made it hard for me to stay by a pantomime. If you have any questions on that, please let me know, but watch that video. There's a whole lot of little nuances in there about counting in your head and 100% success rate and the release at the end and the book ends. So if you have any questions on that or anything else, please let me know. If I don't hear from you, I assume that means everything is going great. So you want to come over there and get those treats? No, you don't like stepping over people. How about there? I just want you to go over here so you can, you can say hi to everyone. You want me to move my legs? There we go. All right, Sue. So she saw she kind of got bouncy around and she's leaning. So I'm gonna hold really still because she's nervous about this. So I want her, that anytime you see her leaning like that with her back legs, that's a good indication that she's not comfortable with something. Don't ever punish or, I don't, the guardian here doesn't do it, but a lot of people chastise or correct their dog for growling. Growling is a communication, I'm uncomfortable with what's going on. And so if you don't do that, a lot of dogs just learn, I'll just go straight to a bite. So remember, if your dog is growling about something, take note of the situation and uh, then increase the distance between her and whatever she's reacting to. And then also recognize what the situation is, is that you might need to come back and repractice that one. And uh, setting her for success with uh, exercise can go a long way. So we had uh, movers coming today. This would have been a great day for her to have spent half the day at uh, daycare or to go for a walk or something along those lines to deplete that excess energy uh, sets the dog up for success. Well, this gorgeous looking girl here is Sue Young. Sue for short. Yes, talking about you. And this is Sue's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only well, sometimes you mean it.